from his, what he was seeking the most. Uh, what kind of prankster God is that? I mean, uh, well, he sees the bigger picture and sees the path that you're going, yes, perhaps that's true, but boy, is this weird. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mr. Allison, first quickly a uh, comment. I thought it was strange that when uh, answering the first questioner's question, you referred to the uh, story of the woman taken in adultery, mm -hmm. when that's pretty well known to be a very late addition to the Bible, and you referred to it as though it was uh, an accounting of real events. Um, so I thought that was odd, but quickly my question is that um, it seems to me that the central defining feature of morality is personal responsibility. And it seems to me that the point of Christianity is to find a way to sidestep that. And since your faith is not contingent upon either the real harms you cause with your actions in life, nor on your ability or willingness to take personal responsibility for them, but merely with what you happen to believe, how can it be called a moral system at all? Um, let me answer that first question. Well, maybe not even a question, it's an observation. Uh, scholars call that uh, the pericope adultere, the, the woman caught in adultery. Um, and yes, it, it almost definitely is a later edition. Um, and yet, uh, it, that doesn't mean it's not a historical event. Um, and in the sovereignty of God, it, uh, it's in our Bibles. Um, so uh, my conviction has always been we have the Bible now that God wanted us to have. And if he's a sovereign God, you would think that would be true. So. Um, not going to, uh, and, and, and there are other passages that relate to a similar kind of um, concern of God with, uh, with people that um, like her. So, uh, and, and as far as personal responsibility goes, um, the whole theme of the New Testament is about love and treating each other uh, the way you would want to be treated. Pure religion is, is taking care of orphans and widows. Um, Christians um, should be when they're demonstrating uh, the fact that they are followers of God, um, the people that are out in the forefront um, taking care of people that need, that, that, you know, that are defenseless. And, um, and, and when that doesn't happen, then we're not following in the path of Christ and we're not reflecting his character. So certainly Christians aren't perfect and, and there are examples of that. There's also examples of Christians doing amazing things. <laughs> I nodded, and I was nodding right along with you yeah. when you said the name, but I'll just say All right, I know. He's got a few things. I could probably say Pascal's wager and make him do the same thing. Um, but um, but I, I never thought that was a good one either, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but my point is, there are, um, you know, when you follow the, the precepts and the guidelines that are outlined in the New Testament, um, uh, a moral person is what you end up being. Um, you can choose not to follow those and, uh, and, and end up somewhere else. But that's a natural consequence of, of following the commands to love your neighbor as yourself and love God as your God. And quickly, because I don't want to give long answers, if you go to wiki.ironchariots.org, which is a counter-apologetic wiki I run, I've done a verse-by-verse -verse deconstruction of the Sermon on the Mount because I get tired of people saying just how wonderful it was. And while I, I agree, there's plenty of good things in there, I think there's some bad things in there, some bad advice. Um, I, I don't find it to be a good guide to being a moral person. I think it uh, advocates victim creation. I think it's one of the reasons why we see uh, a Christian majority that just loves to claim they're being persecuted. Um, because that means that the devil's really out to get them and they're really being tried when really it might just be that they are uh, disparaging everybody else who doesn't agree with them. I have a question that was inspired by the references that each of you made. Uh, for Mark, uh, do you believe it's important that we know the religious affiliations of our political candidates, not just whether they're Christian or not, but to their actual denomination? And for Matt, you made a reference to a thousand years. Do you believe that if humans are still around a thousand years from now, that religion will be seen, as Arthur Clarke said in 2001, that religion will be seen as a form of insanity, or in other words, which way do you think the pendulum is just moving towards more religion or more secularism? Um, I, I have a question for Marcus. 
Okay, Chris, you go first, and I'll. Yeah, because I went last last year. Yeah. So like, yeah. Um, no, I, I'm being sincere. Um, I think it's inevitable um, that reality is going to win out. And as far as I can tell, uh, reality is uh, a, a, a reality without a god. Um, and so I think religion um, is going to follow the same path that it's followed, th followed throughout history, which is religions are born, and they live for a while, and they die off. Um, but they don't ever completely die off. I actually get email from people who still believe in the great God or, or say they do. Um, I, I think that eventually religion will get uh, to the point where it's about as popular as like the Flat Earth Society, or at least the religions that we see now. But I think there will be new religions, because we're humans and we're fallible, and we are so enamored of our own intellect and our intuition and our inductive reasoning that we make mistakes and we just run right through with the mistakes. Um, and I, I don't know if you want me to chime in on the other question, but I just go with Article 6, Article 6 of the Constitution that says there'll be no religious test for any public office or trust. Uh, but I also care about what people believe. Um, so I don't have a right to ask, but if they offer it up, they have a right to choose. Yeah, travel otherwise. Who's been praying? <laughs> I told I told a couple of my friends that if, if it started going badly for me to uh, hit the, the uh, fire alarm, <laughs> it probably should have been hit a while ago. They didn't like it. Yeah, as far as the question on uh, political parties, I don't. I, I think I'm stepping out a little bit of um, speaking for the uh, uh, theistic worldview on, when I comment on that. But um, I, I would uh, certainly want a moral person, uh, whatever his faith or beliefs. And I think we've shown that you can be an atheist and be a moral person. Um, I want somebody that uh, that that followed. Um, Ethical moral code, and uh, that would. Uh, but yeah, I, Martin Luther said. I thought this was interesting. Um, his uh, perspective was that government should um, be as limited as possible. That that Christians uh, shouldn't um, affect the uh, government itself, and uh, because his point was is that if you try to make people Christians and they're not, they're going to uh, uh, they're not going to become Christians anyway, and they're just going to. Uh, Bill against that. So, uh, so his, his position was the government should be as much hands off as possible and just do the necessary things that it needed to do and let people follow the dictates of their own heart. And as far as I'm concerned, that sounds as good to me. I sound like I'm piling on, but Mark, this question is also for you. Yeah. Um, back on the topic of tonight being good without God, can you name a tangible benefit, and I define tangible as being demonstrably real, a tangible benefit or a tangible moral good that religion offers that can also be achieved without religion or through some other secular avenue? Um, that's a good question. Um, the, the issue isn't that, uh, okay, that it can't be, is that, is that if you follow um, uh, logically the outcome of a particular worldview, is that going to be the result or not? Um, logically, the outcome from a, from a Judeo-Christian worldview is that we're going to love our neighbors as ourselves, we're going to love God, we're going to take care of widows and orphans, we're going to follow, in the, um, you know, follow after Christ and pattern our lives after, after Him. Um, we're going to be moral people and honest and good, and that's the natural progression from a theistic Christian worldview. Um, from an atheist worldview, where you don't have absolute moral guidelines, that those kind of things don't naturally follow. You can still be a perfectly moral, good person. You can be a person that's better than a Christian, but those things don't naturally follow from a materialist worldview. I don't have anything to add. I, I and, that. Okay, another you question. Familiar. You've already asked the question. So <laughs> The guys behind you haven't asked questions. Do you think that's down. responsible behavior on your part? Anyway, you have a good question. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm kidding. Well, uh, someone wanted me to ask you, uh, why don't you leave the cult and what's your justification for it? And Mark, you keep uh, trying to justify what you're saying by referring to the Bible. What I want to know is how do you justify that as a justification? And if it's personal experience, 
you claim that I've had personal experience, but I, I don't think I have. And if I have, maybe God's given me personal experience, but obviously it's, it's not enough to convince me. Um, yeah, so trying to justify the Bible from personal experience, um, I, I guess I'm not exactly, are you trying to justify, justify Christianity without relying on personal experience? I mean, why do you consider the Bible to be a good guide for your moral behavior? Or uh, why do you consider, you keep using that, like you can keep, for your uh, evidence of why it's... Well, I'm trying to present the theistic worldview, so it is also my worldview, but I'm trying to present it in, in a way that would apply to anybody, whether you're a, uh, uh, whatever denomination you're, you're with. Um, uh, the Bible, what Christians believe is that um, there is general revelation, which is the evidence of God that we see in nature. And so uh, uh, the Bible says that when you look around, that the things of God are clearly seen in the things that he has made. Then there is special revelation, which is the Bible. It's the story, the accounts of God's dealing with people. The Bible is not like a magic book or anything. It's a, it, it is inspired, um, and, and it's, uh, but, but it's not magic. And so it's a story. There are accounts of how God dealt with his people. And so um, uh, as, we, as we take those timeless truths and, and then apply them to our lives, um, it makes sense and it works. And you know, that's one of the reasons I'm a Christian is because it works. It makes me a better person. Um, I attend a church where I see lives changed um, all the time. Um, people that are broken and hurting, and uh, and they they uh, their lives are they're healed, they're, they're changed. And so um, pragmatically, I apply the principles that I see in the Bible, and it works. So in your, your question to me about why I'm a the cult. Um, I've addressed it many times on the show. There's clips online that tell my whole background. I touched on it a bit earlier. I don't want to drag this out any longer. I don't believe because a sincere and honest search for evidence failed to produce anything and produced evidence in opposition. But did you have faith at all? Sure, I used to have lots of faith. Now, now I find I don't have faith in anything. Um, I, I want to let this guy do this question. I, I'll be happy to come, come back to address that, but he's been waiting a long time. Yeah, my question is the Bible, matter of fact. Uh, but Matt, you know, uh, either you believe it or not, uh, 25 years, you believe it, or then 25 years later, I'm an atheist. Uh, but the question is, you say you believe in 1 Peter 3.15, and I believe in 2 Timothy 2.15, 2, by the way. But, and you based on what you say, um, with Jephthah's violence and other things, you believe there is contradiction to it. Um, what is your view about the Bible? And what if you're wrong, is my second part. What is your view, and what if you're wrong? Sure, thank you. Uh, thanks for both. My, my view of the Bible is pretty simple. Um, the Bible is a chronicle of a collection of people's best attempts to understand the world that they were living in and their place in it. It's a collection of myths and legends, not any different, or not dramatically different from others. Um, it's the one that was perhaps most or second most successful uh, in, in actually appealing to people. And the one thing that religions are good at is setting up, a, a, as they've grown and, and changed, is setting up a protective mechanism around them. Um, this, this idea that the, the religions that are easy to challenge have died off. The religions that are really good at protecting themselves, perhaps in obfuscation or in appeals to mystery and things like that, tend to linger around because they provide people with hope. My question is whether or not the hope is actually real. Now, as to what if I'm wrong, um, I'm, it's, I guess, a version of Pascal's wager. Uh, it's Kirk Cameron's go-to version of Pascal's major. Um, the quick answer to what if I'm wrong is I will, I'll, I'll find out and I'll certainly admit that I was wrong. It's not, you know, it's not like I wouldn't uh, it's a very, in the face of a god and say, nope, nope, you don't admit this. It's crazy. Um, but, but I would have a lot of questions. And, and one of the things is, is even if I were to discover that the god of the Bible, for example, exists, and I found this out before I was dead, 
I could no longer be an atheist. I would definitely believe that this God existed. Whether or not I would worship this God is a whole other question, and it would depend on 